Hi, I'm Richard Wright for Software Bisc. Today I'm going to show you how to quickly set up and polar align your Paramount when you're on the road. This is my dark sky site in South Florida, but we could just as easily be at a state park or a star party or your own backyard. This technique works wherever you are, and you don't need one of these things to get set up and going in a timely manner. Now, when you've had to drive two hours or all day to get to a dark sky site, time is of the essence, and you don't want to be wasting starlight tweaking your alignment and trying to get your tracking going. So, we're in daylight. Let's go. Speaking of daylight, notice the abundance of it right now. Always show up at your dark sky site plenty early so that you have plenty of daylight to get set up, get organized, find that missing piece of little black wire in the bottom of a dark container somewhere. Don't wait till you're racing the setting sun or trying to set up in the dark or in the twilight. And if it's a star party, doubly so because there's lots of chit chat people want to come and see what you're doing there's nothing wrong with that that's why we go to star parties but it does uh, take a little extra time to get set up and you should factor that in now the foundation of your mount is your portable pier or tripod here I have the software BISC pyramid portable pier and I have it set on three pavers that I have set down into the grass so it will be stable during the night now the software BISC portable pier has three important features for the portable imager Number one, it's light at only 20 pounds. It's very easy to transport. Second, the head loosens very easily for very easy azimuth adjustments of your mount. Then you tighten it back down with your hand only, and it's stable for the rest of the night. Third are these micro levelers, making it very easy to make small, tiny adjustments to get your mount as level as possible. There's even a bubble level in the top to help you get it right. Having a good level mount is key to the one star polar alignment trick that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Yep, pretty happy with that. Now if you can't find a good hard surface to set up on and you're on grass, if it's allowed where you are, you might need to dig up a little bit of grass so that you can get the feet down to the solid ground underneath the grass. Uh, what happens during the night is there'll be some settling and of course that's going to throw off your hard, hard one polar alignment. You don't want that to happen. Also, when you're trying to get level, uh, you can, with an Allen wrench, adjust these bottom feet, give or take a few more inches, and that gives you quite a bit more room uh, for... Eh, it's very hard to find level ground sometimes, yes. Now that I have a level tripod or pier, I can put the Paramount on and the counterweight extension shaft. I'm not going to load the Paramount down with a scope or counterweights just yet, and I'm also not going to tighten the azimuth adjustment. That's going to be one of the last adjustments and tweaks that we make. The next thing I'm going to do is set the altitude. Now all paramounts have these tick marks to show the elevation. You're going to set this to your current latitude, which for me is about 27 degrees. You need to go down just a little bit. That looks about good. I'm also not going to tighten my altitude retaining knobs yet because I'm, I'm going to do some fine tuning to this in a minute. Now I'm just about ready to go mechanically. The mount's on. I have the altitude set. I'm more or less pointed north. Next thing I'm going to do is my one star alignment, but I'm not going to wait till it's dark to do that, and I need a computer plugged into the mount next. The Paramount User's Guide outlines a procedure called the Quick Polar Alignment Method, and it has you do pretty much what we just did. It then tells you to salute to a bright star and center it in the telescope using only mechanical adjustments to the mount. Don't use the hand paddle or the computer at all. I'm going to do the same thing except I'm not going to wait until it's dark. I'm going to use the brightest star in our sky, the sun, and I can do this during the daytime. I've just told the mount to slew to the sun. Now, of course, you could do this with the telescope on it, but I don't recommend it unless your scope is really well covered. If you have one of those open truss scopes, I really wouldn't trust that at all. Since I haven't tightened down the head, I can very easily turn my mount and sight down the Versa plate to where the sun lines up. Now, I'm not going to recommend that you stare at the sun. There are a number of uh, products on the market to help you point at the sun for solar observers and imagers, and you can employ one of those. I have a little tube a friend made for me. It's got a pinhole on one end and a projector screen on the other, and I can lie that right inside the Versa plate, and I can adjust this until the sun's disk makes a little image on the back and then I know I'm pointing straight at the sun. Any adjustments in altitude should be very, very small because you set it to our latitude earlier. So you should be just about there. We only want to do little fine tunings if your mount, of course, is level. Uh, we only want to do very fine-tuned uh, tweaks to get, it, to get it good. 
I've just completed my one star alignment during the daytime. Now I can disengage the worms, lock it down, load my equipment, balance it, get everything ready to go before twilight gets here. Once twilight comes, all I have to do is rehome the mount and I'm good to go. With practice, I'm consistently five to ten arc minutes off the pole now with this technique whenever I'm doing portable imaging, which is good enough for a lot of focal lengths to avoid field rotation in a single sub. Now if you're shooting at a longer focal length or you want to shoot for a really long time, perhaps with narrow band, then you might want to tweak your polar alignment just a little bit more. And in the next video I'm going to show you how to do that with T-Point and we can do it all during twilight without wasting any valuable imaging time.